It's Friday. It is Rapid Fire Friday here on the Ramon Foster Show. He's Ramon over there in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports in downtown Pittsburgh. And what's up, Moan? It's Friday, DK. That's what's going on, man. How, how's everything your way? I have no complaints other than these stupid spotted lantern flies, which we're all going to pack up and send to Tennessee next summer. No, 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 no. It's okay. <laughs> Whatever they are, leave them there, DK. I'm okay with the stink bugs we have. I don't need anything mm-hmm. spotted or lantern flying around anyway. Only thing that I like glowing, DK, is is, is uh, lightning bugs. Those are the only thing. Yeah, lightning bugs. Yeah, no bugs. We just, <laughs> we just we just want to get rid of these things. We have a lot of ground to cover today, guys. Last show before uh, the Steelers versus the Raiders Sunday night. I'll be flying to Las Vegas tomorrow. We will have a show Monday, but it's going to be dicey on the hours for that one. Yeah, yeah. There will be a reaction. Definitely have to have one. This is also very unique too, DK, because – This team back-to-back for where it is, where it is. I sounded so Southern right there. Where it is. (laughs) Did you hear that? My Southern drawl came out, man. Uh, You know what? We'll we'll discuss this after. You ready to hit this button, man? Or this bell? I I am. I believe that I am. All right. Wait, wait. Actually, I hit there. Okay, now I'm ready. Now you're ready. Here we go. Now I'm ready. Yep. That's good. Yeah, I'm not buying this here. Paul Scherf says, uh, Penn State Research believes that the lanternflies have no lasting negative impact. Dude, they're annoying. What That's the, it. That's all it is. They're what super it, crazy annoying. They fly into you? They fly into buildings. It's just stupid. You can watch <laughs> them do it here all day long. They're really? just They're just dumb. They, they, <laughs> they, they, they do like this awkward spinning around like they've never flown before in their lives. They crash into buildings and then they drop down, plop at the sidewalk next to the buildings. Do they die? Oh, they die. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Well, there it is. As and then as once not... they make it down to the ground, they get plenty of help dying. <laughs> Do they really? Oh, we're stomp. That's all you see out here is just everybody stomping. What what um? You say everybody stomping. What use are they? Like, do they have no. any? No. No, they're well, invasive, and as Daniel says here, they secrete and destroy leaves and plants on certain trees. Uh, look, I, I don't care about the trees. They're annoying. <laughs> you got to care about the trees, DK. You got to care even about the, the trees. Even the lanternflies are Matt Canada's fault, according to Richard. Well, there it is, then. I, I, I guess that's what it is. As long as they're not running up like in your face and stuff like that all the time, I think that's all right. We can live there. I say that because I'm not dealing with them also, DK. Yeah, no, exactly here. I'll tell uh, you what else we're dealing with, though, too, is this. I just want to handicap you real quick. Mm-hmm. This team, man, for where it stands, still has five at, at late afternoon or late night games still, DK. You surprised by that? Is that the brand or that's the, that's the supposed brand. outlook? That's the no, brand? that's the brand. Yeah, that's all that is. Okay. There's certain things that happen automatically. Uh, when it comes to television and football and Steelers and Cowboys are two of those things. Yeah. yeah. They're just always, they're, they're looking to put them on. They don't care what or how Moan and, and some of you, the, the, the years that you guys had that weren't so great, you were still playing a bunch of night games. Yeah, we were, we were, I, I, I cannot like there are six still left DK that are late afternoon or oh, yeah. prime time slots. That That's actually saying a lot right there. And I'm hoping that they feel some pressure of getting the job done because they're playing in prime time. Uh, mm-hmm. Nobody likes to be embarrassed on Monday night, Sunday night, or th- even Thursday night football, DK. I, I think that's very unique, man, that this team has a lot. And I'm okay with it being that way as long as they're winning. We, we, does this count as a West Coast trip? Oh, yeah. It does. Oh, you, you're, yeah, I mean, there's no coast there, but there's a whole lot of west. Okay, <laughs> you I, know? I, It's a long flight. Uh, I'll be in the air for – I saw the flying time is four hours and 36 minutes. Um, yeah, they'll they'll feel it, you know. And, yeah. You know, you know your head coach isn't going to fly them out any earlier to 
Get them acclimated. Not again. Last time we tried to fly out earlier, somebody was late to the plane anyway. Heck, we would have been better off living, leaving in our regular time anyway. Uh, it just throws you off. That's all it is. What, what's your feeling on this game? Like, give me, a, give me a sense or even an outright prediction or whatever. What do you got? My prediction is they win and they win close. Um, I, I look at this week and I say the defense has to back it up again. And the offense has to be a little bit better. It's hard to predict this team getting over 20 points at this point, though, too, DK. Mm -hmm. That's fair to say. I don't know what this team's going to do offensively to make me, you know, optimistic about them getting the job done. That's what sucks about it the most, man, is Mm -hmm. that defense can hold them to 18 points, 16 points, you know, 14 or 10. But if they're out there so long and so much, DK, then the defense gets tired. Everybody has a breaking point, right? You can run five miles each and every day, and the moment you run 10 or 12 in a single setting, you're going to be tired and tapped out. That's that's kind of how I feel about what this defense is up against. We're trying to figure out if this offense is going to help it out. I, I can see them winning, DK. What, you, what do you have for a score? Let's go... Hold up, give me a second. I'm thinking because I'm really am thinking about the offense. I appreciate the effort for something that yeah, nobody's gonna drag. I know nobody's <laughs> gonna drag it, but I don't want to be foolish in us ha- doing this job too. Let, let's let's go, DK. 10 to um 10 18. I, I'll stick there again. Still okay. 10 18. Okay. Well, here's my feel for this game, and it's limited. I do believe that this offensive line is capable of better run blocking than it's shown. And I'm not exactly going out on a on a limb there, okay? Uh, these guys have all done it. Everybody is, who's part of this offensive line has done good run blocking. I believe from there that you will see the Steelers develop a rhythm through running. I don't believe the passing game is going to get solved unless you count one or two mega splash plays that maybe a George or a Calvin Austin will work on. So I think there's going to be an improvement in the offense, but I think it's going to be mostly in the run game. Part of that, too, I think it's because Jalen Warren is going to get more carries and is going to offer more explosiveness. The defense, I'm not worried about. Okay? Yeah. These guys are going to make Jimmy Garoppolo's life hell. Yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, this, is, this isn't even uh, – that, that part to me isn't even, like, worth – dissecting here okay, this isn't yeah. the Raiders with Derek Carr who Derek Carr would carve these guys up oh my god he really did too yeah yeah uh, he would that, that's not gonna happen here uh so. you you mentioned something you you did a real quick drive by DK and didn't even stop to say goodbye you said Jalen Warren getting more snaps this week oh yeah yeah I think you're gonna see a couple of things Jalen Warren I he, he's definitely gonna get more involved in the offense uh, whether that means more carries or, you know, screens to pull people away from the the pass rush and so forth, uh, but Jalen's going to be more involved. You're going to see more of him. Uh, you're also going to see more of a focus, finally, on Pat yeah. Fryermuth. Now, this coordinator is not capable of utilizing a tight end properly, so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> when I say that, I'm talking about maybe two or three more balls over the middle. Yeah. Okay. I'll repeat this. He's not capable. He does not have the capacity to create an offense that throws over the middle of the field. Everything's got to be outside the hashes for him. Yeah. Okay. So all of this is one big thing, but I do think you're going to see the running game respond. There's too much pride. There's too many people who believe in each other. Okay. And there's experience and there's, there's, and there's background for it. You follow me? Yeah. That's what matters more than anything. It's in there. Yeah, I, I, I'll side with you on that one. I want to believe that with that group, too, uh, when it boils down to it. I, you you started right there as far as getting the run game started. I am, DK, going to start with um, the quarterback again. And, and I want to just lean on the fact that, look, we start, I started there on Monday, and I, I think it's okay to start there on a Friday going into the weekend. He – for whatever the case may be, has to get comfortable with his pass throwing. He also has to get comfortable with his feet in the pocket too. And his computer, meaning his brain, has to slow down a little bit, DK, to complete the passes to Pat Fryermuth or to the sideline 
or in those nice tight spots that we're looking for him to do those things. The same thing that we saw in the preseason. I, I'm hoping we expect to see the same things in this game moving forward. You got two under your belt right now. Go do the right thing. This defense, as it stands with the uh, Raiders, is giving up, DK. They are giving up. I had it just a second ago. They 27 are. points a game. And and yards. And that's the other part. And, is they're, they're, they're the worst in the league right now at allowing teams to just move down the field yes. and penetrate their red zone. Uh, that's that's part of the reason that I'm foreseeing this running game finally getting going. I love it, but I, I do want to see Kenny. And I know that's a dead horse, beating a dead horse at this point. If the opportunity presents itself, and I'll say this too, the Raiders will have Devontae, uh, Devontae this weekend also. Uh, and you got to look at that and say, if our defense can hold up and stop him as much as we need them to, then there's an there's an opportunity we can control the game by running it, right, DK? Yes. But if we do get into a uh, 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 a shootout with the Raiders, because everybody plays the Steelers hard, it's always how I live my life as a player. Um, I need to see some development from Kenny, and I think that's fair to say this weekend. Yeah, it absolutely is, guys. When we come back. We're going to engage, and I do mean in rapid fire. That means you over there, 73. I know. Rapid fire. Quick. I know. I got y'all. Like, got like y'all. this. It just okay? get me going, DK. To get me going. I got Consider you. Consider it the hurry up offense, all right? We'll put a two minute oh. clock up there the way, you know, uh, th that show on ESPN where they have the clock running. Yeah, yeah. We'll, One we'll, tap and we roll, and everybody know the snap count. Let's go. That's it. Here we go. <laughs> all right. The only segment that matters. Hey, Mo. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. The way to become a member of this fine program, everybody, is to go to dkps.net slash join. And that is right there. All you do is you take that, you put it up in your URL. Clicking on the screen won't do anything, so don't do that. Type it, dkps.net slash join up there. We've had a couple of new members today. We appreciate everybody who's coming in. We've had a couple of contributions come in Uh let me get to those over here on this side, and that would be Bill Pastor coming in at ten dollars without even Thank a question. You, Bill, Bill's got no favor to ask. Bill's None. just Bill's just like, hey, you guys, what's up? That's what's up, man. We we put that into the beer fund. DK GHBC yeah. comes in as a brand new member. David Wiggins comes in as a brand new member, and Steel Blitz comes in with showing up. Everybody, twenty Come bucks. On, wow. <laughs> so our Steelers will be fine. It's Sunday night football. Vegasburg, I don't know what that means. Our team knows we need a bounce back after a couple of rough games. Tomlin the Great is our coach. Okay. I'm actually feeling Steel City victory vibes. That is some significant optimism on Steel Blitz's part there. It's rare we get that, Steel Blitz. And I'm appreciative of it. And thank you for the contribution, too, man. Vegasburg is essentially, he's saying uh, Steelers fans are going to take over Vegas. I believe that. I do think if it's a bad game, we will hear that chant that you said we will not hear, DK. No we have an open bet on that one. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, no pun intended when I say that, too, by the way. No chance. <laughs> I hear you. Mommy wants to know, do the Steelers have their own private plane? Moan's got this one. Uh, own private plane? No. They lease out a plane uh, for a year, or they have contracts with airlines. We've had American. We've had Miami Air. We've had uh, others. I'm not sure who they're flying with right now. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's uh, American Airlines is who they're flying with mostly. Yeah, what they end up doing, and this, this applies also to National Hockey League teams and Major League Baseball teams, but football's a little different because you've only got the nine or ten trips, okay? Yeah. So what they do is they 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 the planes go from one place to the next. Planes that are sitting on the ground is bad business. That's yes, true across aviation. So they're constantly trying to just move them. So they'll say, "Hey, listen, we'll pick you up. We'll take you to Las Vegas, and then after that, we're going to go over to Kansas City and take the Chiefs to Green Bay." Yep. So the plane keeps moving. The NFL teams work with each other to coordinate the travel. 
and yep. attempt anyway. But the to, crews stay the same. The uh, yeah. flight attendants, pilots, and stuff like that stay the same, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and they're waving towels and stuff. Yeah, and, all and that you other have stuff. to be inside the fraternity to get on those planes, too. They're not letting anybody on the plane. Mm -hmm. Ex exactly. Uh, the three chefs are coming in. Uh, Rodolfo's been our regular reminder of this. Like, he's taking this like as, as his mission. He has. And I appreciate and, him, too, DK. And he says that he, you should go to the Get-Go Cafe and Market where quality is at the core of every menu item. Take this from Rodolfo. Please. Three expert chefs fine-tune every detail so that every sub-burger, salad, wrap, drink, and app is crafted for what they call crave-ability. Order your favorite entry. And do this on Sunday, by the way, at the Get-Go Cafe and Market today. Like, actually go into a Get-Go. Mm-hmm. Okay, go onto the screen, type up everything that you want, whether it's just for your own little get together or for a big old party or whatever it is. Absolutely perfect. The stuff is bagged well. It stays hot in the car. If you get hot food, it's good, good stuff. Look at you. I'm uh, sold, DK. Randy Wagner says, Hey, Moan, I'm so impressed with Darnell Washington so far. Is he all that we believe that he is? And how's he impressed you? You're impressed because it's such a small role. He's doing the job that he specialized in, Randy, for the most part. As long as this role stays right there right now, the more and more he can grow as a pro, man. I saw also the question about JPJ. You know, I think it's the same thing with him. You gradually walk him into becoming a better pro. You don't want guys being shell-shocked. Uh, but I do think Darnell Washington is going to be a guy that you, uh, you remember for a while. It's just what his role will expand upon, though. Yeah, everyone should know he's he's slowed by a knee. That was something that happened, and it was visible in the last game. It was on, by the way, that play that everyone's showing where absolutely everybody got schooled on the offensive line. You know which yeah. one I'm talking about? Yep, the, yep. Where Najee Harris runs to the left. Every single O-lineman, it's like the reverse Renaissance painting. It's the ugliest thing you've ever yeah. seen. Uh, but – Darnell goes down and falls hard on that knee, and he stays down for a while. Now, he continued playing to his credit. I believe he'll play Sunday night in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, Lynn asks, shout out to the script writers on Joey Porter Jr.'s storyline. Interception is first start. Game-winning stop during the first AFC North game of the season. I got to tell you guys something. I asked JPJ, was that a catchable ball? And you know what? Being just like his old man and as honest, <laughs> brutally honest as his old man was with everything, he goes, no. <laughs> but you were there. In case it was a catchable ball, you were there. He goes, yes, I was. <laughs> he, he dapped you up real quick. <laughs> but Love it, it. The point. The coverage is the point. Yeah. yeah. He did not make a game-winning stop. That pass was not catchable. Catchable. Yep. Was, but just like they, they – they tell you that in baseball, there's no experience like the ninth inning. There's no experience like getting that 27th out. Yeah. For Joey to have that moment between the interception, and this is what Lynn's pointing out here, and then to be on the field and to be on that guy for the last – man, that's that's an accelerator, that's, isn't it, Moan? Yeah, it, it gives him confidence more than anything, knowing that he can play. Even if the ball – sometimes the ball bounces your way. Sometimes the pass is overthrown a little bit, and sometimes they drop it. That is all right. It keeps you engaged and keep you optimistic, DK. Let's use that mm -hmm. word about your pro career moving forward because you could have easily got burnt. Yeah. I mean, that that's the thing. This is like Ash says here. That's the story, DK. He made a stop. Well, he, he again yeah. – he didn't stop anything, but it didn't happen either. A lot of times you'll see DBs like Mona saying, get yeah. super and then they're doing this and everything <laughs> else. And you're, and you're seeing like, dude, all he did was drop the ball. doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use the baseball closer comparison again. All that matters is the outcome. Did you get the 27th out or not? Was this a screaming line drive to the fence? It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. You got the out. Never apologize for winning is basically what you're saying. That's pretty good. Never apologize for winning. Mm -hmm. William points out here that Levi Wallace needs to have a bounce back game. I see the Raiders lining up Devontae Adams against him every time. You would too, and you would yes. throw at him all night long. Yeah, you would, but I'll say this. That defense usually finds a way to cover that superstar guy. They got Devontae Adams, and that's the answer right there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hunter Renfro is out there for a bit, but he's no Devontae Adams. They will double the stars when it comes to a guy like Devontae Adams. So if Levi Wallace has a bounce back week, it's because Levi Wallace in the secondary has a bounce back week. 
everybody. Bob Schreiner says that secondary needs a corner to step up and say, I am the man. Why not two? Okay. Why not Desmond King suiting up finally? And that's what I'm, I'm How saying. long do you yeah. need to learn a defense? Yep. Yep. How, 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 much, how long does it take for you to say, yo, somebody's got to take this over? I will say yeah. Pat P last week, he needs to bounce back bad. He does. Yeah, I, I, I thought Levi Wallace was picked on a lot more than Pat Pete, but you know, one way or another, you got to get Joey Porter Jr. I, I am hearing that Joey Porter Jr. will play okay. a, a good bit more. He's gone from seven snaps in his first game, 14 snaps in his second game. You know what? Double that. Yeah, Just keep yeah. going like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, here's one from Cody. It's a good one, Moan. Are they playing soft zone because of the running backs who've been faced so far? It seems like the Steelers are okay giving up five or less yards on a pass, but more worried about the run. You stop the run, you stop a whole lot of what the offense does. Stopping the run, I think most times it's the biggest uh, goal of almost any defensive coordinator. If your dudes get abused and body up front, you can't get to the quarterback in those cases right there. And this is the thing, too. You'll see those dink and dunks five-yard zone plays because that's essentially what it is. If your defense can't get home or you're not blitzing them, guess what? The quarterbacks, good quarterbacks, will find soft spots in the zone. That's what zone is also. There's usually always a spot or two that's open. Josh Jacobs isn't getting mentioned either. This is a, this is a know, really, really good running back. So this idea here, and it comes up here from, yeah, Rick. He says, you think they'll stop Josh? Jacobs? They haven't stopped anybody yet. They haven't. They didn't but, stop whatever that guy's name was who came in for Cleveland. Yeah, uh, well, he eh, that comes with a caveat. Know, cut back. Comes oh, with a caveat. They that, did. You take that away, he's averaging about three yards a carry. You don't though. take that away. I know you can't take it away, but that was over pursuing to the ball. 60 plus runs of 60 plus yeah. yards in back to back weeks. They did it to McCaffrey, and it was the same sideline, the same everything. And they end up doing the, uh, the, the, the uh, very similar looking yeah. play with the cutback. And there it went. Yes, and that right there is fixable to me. That's pursuit lanes right there, DK, and everybody knowing where they're supposed to be at. I'm not overly worried about those fluke plays uh, unless it happened three times, okay? We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. We've got some uh, some gifts coming in here. You see Crow 74 is in there with 10. Uh, we had Mama was in too, right? Mama, what is that, veggie? What's she go by? <laughs> Mama Vegan Nami. <laughs> Oh, my Vegan Ami. Mommy Vegan Ami. Yes, okay, that's what it was. Thank so you. You've got that one. And guess what else, people? We have 1,363 wow. members. on our, And the gifts, as the boss points out over here, you might awesome. be able to hear her from the peanut gallery. Uh, those are a big, big part of this. They really are. Uh, so make sure you have your, your gift acceptance turned on. Uh, we already called out Justin Works for coming in. Absolutely. Uh, with the gifts as well. Roland the Tenant has a $5 contribution, and he asks, Hey, Moan, who would replace Matt Canada if he goes during the season? Do you just put names in a hat and pick one? <laughs> Do an OC for a day contest. Let fans <laughs> in on the incompetency. I love the creativity that this is bringing out in people. I don't know if that's undermining uh, uh, Coach Tomlin, the uh, entire offense, or whatever the case may be at this point. The guy that we assume, I see Justin Works says, the local high school coach. Come on, Justin, be better than that. Uh, the guy I think everybody assumes is going to end up taking a job if Matt Cannon let go is Glenn Thomas, point blank period. And then again, you Why have else is he yourself, employed? Yeah. What, what, what what is Glenn Thomas though, DK? Like legitimately, me asking you that. Like, is he proven to know how to work this offense? Because if he can't throw suggestions to Matt Canada right now, or maybe Matt Canada's not listening. Not listening. Now, all I know is that this man knows the playbook. Okay. Yeah. He knows the playbook. Mike Sullivan knows the playbook. Yeah. So you have two people who can do that. The only skill that is relevant here, Roland in the moment is that they know this playbook because you cannot change any playbook in late September. No, you All cannot. Right? You just don't bring a brand new one in and say, hey, everybody, I'm the new guy. No, absolutely not. Bill Pastor says, hey, Moan, in 2018, you guys won three out of four preseason games and then only one of the first four regular season games. What did the coaches do to go on a six-game winning streak that this team can implement. What happened with you? You know what we did? 
Mm. Well, I, I, we simplified it. That's essentially what we did. We absolutely simplified everything that we were going to end up doing and moving forward. And Even then the, though your group had an unbelievable amount of experience yes. and pedigree. Yes, 100%. And here's what's so fascinating. I remember that year distinctly because that was the introduction of, the introduction of Patrick Mahomes. We lost that first game in an overtime loss, too. So it wasn't like we were getting beat down. We just had a bad luck of the draw in those moments right there. We simplified stuff and knew we were good enough. And then it just became one of those situations where we just started reeling off folks. I'm looking at it right now. We were putting up points, too. 41 against Atlanta. Oh, my gosh. We were having a day. We simplified it and started owning up to who we were as a team. And that's all that I'm telling you, watching these guys run into each other going left and right on this line, it's it, that one play is, I know it's just one play, but it's so mm -hmm. damning uh, and so reflective at the same time of the lack of communication and the lack of clarity is probably the better word. Where they just, I don't, it, nobody knew where they were supposed to be or who they were supposed to have. And that yeah. can't happen in a week two of a regular season. Cannot, DK. Um, did, did, um, that the year we won AFC North too, because we split with yeah. Baltimore. And I think we beat Came everybody else. Came all the way else. back. Yeah, we you did. were wearing the shirts at the end. We were. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, Lyle Crop says, "Hey, Moan, you can't simplify this offense much more." That's not what he's talking about. Explain, That's not Moan. What, what I'm simplifying is this: beating your man to a man, playing your technique, uh, making routine plays, routine. A five yard out, take the five. Okay, there's no reason to look for that seven yard uh, uh, corner route. Okay, or that fifteen yard corner route. Take the fives. Get those five yards of pop. What is the actual goal? That's what we ended up doing the sitting down. Like, hey, we got to go move guys up. We simply got to go beat dudes up. And we did those things defensively. Y'all got to come join with us and, and, and make some plays for us too. It was a challenge that guys ended up having to take on the chin and understanding, look, we can't operate like this. We're too good of a team. That's honestly why I think the frustration is for this 2023 Pittsburgh Steelers team too. It's too much talent around, DK. Kevin in Albuquerque says all the good plays are from Glenn Thomas. All the bad plays are from Matt Cannon. Of course, I'm being sarcastic here. But but here's the thing. If something happened, past yeah. tense, already, where Tomlin says, listen, I had enough of this, okay? And he's in the room with all the offensive guys, meaning the, the coaches. The coaches. I've had enough of this. Here's what we're going to do. Which one of you is going to call plays that work? Okay, then that's going to be the one who's calling plays. And I don't care who smokes it out, who who's paying attention, who's nosing around, who's got the headset on, who's doing most of the talking during the game and whatever else here. At some point, I really yeah. believe that the head coach needs to say, look, I love you guys. I appreciate your loyalty. I have tried to be loyal back. I've stuck with you through thick and thin. But winning that football game out there tonight means more. Yep. That's the reason that we're all here. You see what I'm saying? Lose the ego. Lose it. But this has also been his MO, too. I don't care what good ideas come from. I'll, I'll ask myself, oh, hey, Mo, hey, Mo, do you think Coach Tomlin had a meeting with the offensive staff this week to figure out what's going, going on with this offense? My answer is hell yes, because you have to. There's too many AFC games coming up, DK, to mm -hmm. where you can't just let these games slip through your hand, especially a bad team like the Raiders moving forward, DK. Get above mm -hmm. 500, man, and keep it there for the rest of the year. I think they probably had a meeting or got some understanding about what the actual goals are in Pittsburgh this week. Ramel Edwards has been jumping up and down on the uncle's table trying to get our attention for a while over there. <laughs> it's really hard to do, Ramel. We, we just don't listen in that direction very often. Not often, but we listening to you right now, Ramel, man. Since That's your name because is he's got a Ramon. really good question here. Yeah. How much is Matt Canada involved or any offensive coordinator involved with the offensive line? I think it's more than people realize. It is. Uh, I saw somebody suggest, and I think I may have even started DK when we're speaking about the. Uh, we were talking about the uh, speaking about the offensive line coaches, and you know, uh, I think the Eagles have like a run game coordinator. Mm -hmm. Most of the line coaches are. Most of the time, the offensive coordinator and the offensive line coach need to work hand in hand because there's nobody in the building that understands the O line like the offensive line coach. So there's certain communication that has to happen with those guys, and it usually happens on Thursday in the coaches' meetings when they break down what's going to work and what's not going to work for the group up front. That's two days of practice, and Friday is where you finalize the actual game plan. They should be talking a lot. The circles that show up on the schemes that have the little lines and then who you're supposed to block, 
Yeah. Those are drawn up, designed, and concluded by the coordinator. Now, as as Dwight clearly has some football background himself here, he astutely observes, Canada and Pat Meyer need to be in a room for a day. There's no sense for the offensive line to be out of step so much. Are they being asked to do it? Well, like Ramon is saying, that actually is a must because let's say that Canada schemes up something where the right guard is going is going to the second level. He's going out to get the linebacker. And Pat Meyer says, whoa, hey, that guy's not very good at that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Against we, this hit, defense. Against this defense, that's not an ideal matchup for us. Let's think of something else. Yes. Uh, and, and it does happen weekly again. We said this too, though. We got about four weeks to figure this thing out. You said right? that all along, even when things were going really well in the preseason. Four weeks is where mm-hmm. we're at. If we see a bounce back in the run game, yeah, I'm here for that. Scotia, hey, Moan, does Kenny aggressively target George Pickens this week? Do you see him almost forcing the ball to him? Scotia, by the way, George is 10 targets Monday night against Cleveland were the first time he's ever hit double-digit targets as a stealer, but only four catches out of those 10 targets. And I'm not doing that sideways look because of George. I'm doing that because Kenny missed him a lot. Yeah, he did. He threw a few balls in the ground. Skull Show, I'll say this. Uh, when you guys asked us, I forget who it was, to ask a question about the 2018 team, Kenny ain't in a position to try to force the football to somebody right now. When I told you we simplify, you take the shots that are right there in front of you. If it's George, give it to George. If it's Pat, pass to Pat. If it's Allen Robinson, pass to him. Take what's open and get a flow of the offense. We don't know how to win. And Kenny doesn't know how to drive the long distance of the field right now. To me, this year, DK, take what's in front of you, Skull Show. That's as simple as it can be this week. Why are we all cheering for your favorite barber? What did he do over here? What did Barber do over here, man? You know, we're checking with the boss. I'm missing it. What did he the barber handed do? out more subscriptions. He did. He, he, yeah, he gave another five. Hey, barber, we will. You, we will get that the on the screen. Yeah, we will. You, the, you, the man, Barber. That's all I got to say. Well, Barber comes in with a question too. Says, "Do we have an offensive coordinator coach?" <laughs> Meaning who coaches the coaches comes in with the obligatory Canadian flag. You did it, Barber. You yeah, did you it. Did. You know we do, man. Five gifts from Barber, says the boss here. The pe- the Pefs comes in and says, is there a chance Matt Canada has a redemption arc starting this Sunday? The, the real question is, Pef, do y'all even want that? Do you want Matt Canada to be good? I used to bring this up last year, and people thought it was the most controversial thing you'd ever say. Yeah. Like, do you actually want him to have a good game? Is that what you want? That's the question. Do you want him to be good, or do you want like because if that's the case, then you're submitting to the fact that okay, well, we'll let Matt Canada grow as an offensive coordinator and be better. That's the real question. Do you want him to go out and have this team have an eleven and six record, and the offense is in the top half of of offensive production? You guys heard the term four loss win? It's a baseball thing. It goes back to the 1970s, actually. Steve Blass tells a story about how when the Pirates had a had a really bad pitcher in the rotation, that he would go out and he'd have one really good start. And he'd say, that's a four loss win because now that guy is going to stay in the rotation <laughs> for four <laughs> more starts because he got that one right. Yeah. <laughs> That's that what makes, you're looking at here. And I hated to answer that like a player in the locker room right there, but that's the question I have for y'all. Do y'all want Matt Canada to go out here and crush it? I think a lot of people, we had a poll, DK, the answer would be no. They don't want Matt Canada to crush oh, it. Oh, yeah, they would right up until 8.20 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday. <laughs> Give me a break. I There's know. not one person. Like if Even if you took a deal where you said, listen, the defense is going to score three touchdowns this yeah. week, not two. And would you take that? No, they still want to see the offense get We're better. Still want to see because you know what the defense is capable of. Yeah, exactly. You know, Steelers girl says if our teams win, we do. I mean, that also means you keep a coach. Yeah, it means you're stuck with this guy. Yeah. Don't, don't forget the head coach, the general manager, and the owner all have everything to gain from keeping this coordinator through the season because they're the ones who stood by him. Yes. Yes. 100%. Okay. DK. Yeah. And, and they don't like looking dumb. And that's why Ramon was using that term earlier. 
you know, about setting aside the egos. That's the ego that's, that's involved. The, it is. They decided he should have been promoted to coordinator, and he's been catastrophically bad. Do, do now see? into his third year of being that. Yeah, yeah. Who? Yeah, Luke comes through with five memberships dropped off at, at at the uncle's table so he can get over there and get them a red solo cup, DK. Just trying to get them fed and, and get some liquids in them, DK. We're going to take a couple more today. I'm, I'm going to head over to the where I, I star these ones that I see a, along the way uh, that, that are good questions so I don't forget them for later. Like Mike Jones asks here, Hey, Moan, I've been thinking about this for three days now. This is actually really cool. What was the locker room like oh, when Dante Moncrief oh. couldn't catch a cold? Swear that man is the healthiest being in the world. I, you know... I'm curious just in general, when you guys know that someone's not performing and you're out there, you're, you're putting your body on the line with every snap and some clown at the far end just goes, oops, yeah. and drops the ball. It was, it was frustrating for us in the beginning. I think it's okay to say that. Like, dude, to your point, I'm breaking my back up here to protect to get the ball out. <laughs> yeah. And then when you saw it be a problem, you almost felt, you know, sorry for him. It's like, dude, you can't, you really can't catch the ball right now. Those are the two phases. Dude, catch the bleeping ball. What the heck? Like, we're coming off the field now because you got butterfingers. Like, I remember that phase. He was such a cool dude and good teammate, and you saw him struggling to be better. It was forgivable. But then, like I said, you get to that point to where he's just like, man, that sucks for him. Crow comes in with a $10 contribution, just says, thank you, guys. Uh, John Knox has a contribution of his own and a question. Hey, Moan, did Ben ever ignore plays from John, the sideline? You know that answer. You, you know that answer, John. You know why John knows that answer? Why? Why? Because Ben would talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The answer is yes. He wanted that out. He, he did. And you know what? He had enough uh, uh, enough in Coach Tomlin, emotional data bank, and won two Super Bowls. You, you're afforded certain things. Yes. It's uh, – let's keep moving here to the next yeah. question here. Joe says, "Do you? we need to see more of Keanu Benton. The more reps he gets, the more powerful he becomes, dominating the middle of the line. Again, Moan, yeah. his film showed really well. Okay, enough's enough. I understand you want to rotate. I understand that stopping the run is a priority, but the film is showing that he's doing okay at that as well. You know what that is? You don't want to give him too much too soon. Keep him in that capacity. I know, I know, but hear me out. That, then you Keep lose him there. I know. Keep him there for a little bit, and then you roll with him, DK. Yes, his film was hot. He got highlighted by a lot of people on social media this past week, man. But again, Everybody's film is out now. We'll see how he adjusts this week being on the road and playing against a, a different set of offensive linemen. But, yes, I was impressed with what he had going on this past weekend. Yeah, Rob asks, uh, hey, hey, DK, what do you think? What do you predict for the TJ and, and the Raiders offensive tackle? will be like, my friends, it does not matter who lines up across from TJ. Tell me, tell me, please, which is the matchup that is unfavorable to him? Now, you're going to have some that are better than others. Right. Like last week, they had the dude with the four or five career NFL starts. That wasn't going to go well, and it didn't, meaning no. for Cleveland. Right. But matchups more often than not, when you're talking about edge rushers, are going to be more related to Alex Highsmith because he's going against the left tackle. And not saying this because I got a left side offensive lineman on the show here, but that's the side where you put your better guys, you know, yes, for the most part. <laughs> yes, it is when it comes down to pass pro, which is awesome that the Steelers don't move TJ around like that. Let him rush over the right tackle. Make that a headache because if he can't see it from the front side, well, if he's getting pressure from his front side and Alex is actually bull rushing guys in the middle of him, you have a vortex of pass pressure. I mean, pass uh, rushing vortex. and pressure. Yes. Vortex. Vortex. You like that, DK? That was solid. I like right that. Listen to my Tennessee education, man. I mean, hey, three what are we kings doing? is pretending that this is a must win game. It's not. Yeah. Uh, three it's kings. Not. Look at him being a member now. He got away from the uncle's table yesterday. But doesn't mean he has a point here. It's not uh, a must win game. With you there. It, 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 everyone is a must win game. Come on, DK. What are we talking about, man? I'm just saying, I, when I think of must win, you know, talk yeah. to me in December. Yeah. 
I got one from Luke, man. Luke actually has some uh some subscriptions he gave out earlier too. Luke goes, mm-hmm. "Hey Moan, are we sleeping too much on the Raiders?" No, I know the team doesn't look great, but they always seem to play well against us. That's why I said earlier, you can't <laughs> deny them. It's not the same team, but Devontae can't get off, and you must stop Josh Jacobs again. I don't think this team is. They're not in a position to to sleep on the Raiders. They have some people. The Raiders do. Okay, they have Max Crosby, who we haven't brought up. Yeah, uh, all week. His name has come up, by the way, a lot over on the south side, a lot, because they don't want to see anybody that's coming in. It's just blowing everything up that they want to do. He's capable now. Yeah, and he and he is capable of that. They, that guy is. Would you say top five? Uh, I give him top eight. Okay. Yeah, but there are games, there are individual performances that he's had where it looks like he's way up there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, where he's really where he's really owned it. And that's going to be a pretty big task. You know, for the O-line, for the tight ends, wherever it is that they line up Darnell Washington, they've got DeVonte Adams, at least whatever's left of DeVonte Adams. They've yeah. got they've got Josh Jacobs. They have players. Some some they they, they don't have enough but Moan, every yeah. time I talk to you about one of your worst, ugliest losses, I know it was Oakland, it's not Oakland. Las Vegas, but yeah, that one is that's the one that hurts. It was the Raiders. It was. It absolutely was, man. And that's why I don't think you'll you'll underestimate this. Coach Tomlin, I'm sure, gave the history lesson on how far back this rivalry goes. Those guys should be locked and loaded. It's primetime football, man. I'm speaking like a player right now because I understand what those dudes got going on. This is a uh, a big time game for a lot of dudes on this team uh, on Sunday night. Benjamin Conrad comes in with a contribution that's appreciated. They're all appreciated from everybody, even when we don't have the opportunity to, you know, to, you know, give the proper shout out. Now that said, Ben comes in right after that and says <laughs> big Ben for OC. I got to tell you something with what Ben was used to getting paid. <laughs> nobody ever talks about this stuff. Why don't the great players ever become coaches or coordinators? Not Why? worth their time. Yeah, it's not worth their time. Literally, not worth their the time. amount of money they were just making to then go even being one of the highest paid coordinators in the league. Oh, but Deion Sanders did it, whatever. Deion is from a different time. Deion yeah. got paid, but a modern quarterback is getting paid. paid. Difference. It's then not worth their have, time. You're going to have Ben sitting there for 60, 70 hours instead of being with his kids. I know you're not being serious, but I just, th- these things, these sorts of things come up all the time. And, and why, why go coach and stress when they can also throw them, uh, they can also throw them behind the camera and give them 30 million a year too. Like, well, that's a different which is where Dion was right. Until, yeah. he, until he decided that he wanted to show everybody he could coach and whatever uh, else. No doubt. Uh, yeah, a lot of people. Ash points out to Ben's living his life. He's not going to coach anything outside of his his son's team. Uh, guys, we appreciate everybody who's been uh, with us, whether it's for a short time or whether it's going back a couple years or whatever Man. it is. Uh, we've we've developed quite the community here, quite the uh, quite the audience when it comes to the back and forth. That's the cool part here. I love that absolutely. So. That's all the time we have for today. Mm, it's Friday, good people. Peace. It is. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing, Moan, <laughs> like I'm the worst at endings. Like, I don't I don't know what it In is. In general? Like, yeah, I just I like the opens are always okay, but this goes for TV, radio, whatever it is. Like, I don't have, a, I never have a, you know, I need to be more like Deshaun Watts in it, you know? A happy <laughs> ending. Bye, DK. If that's not a mic drop, bye, sir. What is, you didn't used to be this way. You used to be better. What, you mean like above it all? Yes, you used to be better than this, DK. Yeah, well, you know who 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 changed me for the worst is these cynical people. <laughs> Demond Brown reminding me to pack shoes for the flight to Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> do we still hey, have the, the shoes emoji? Do we still have yes, that? Okay. Yes, we do. Oh my gosh, DK. Yeah, people are already they're, they're not they're not even discussing whether or not Canada should be fired. It's gotten to the point where it's just like tell me who's next. It's assumed at this point, yeah, right? There's DK. Byron Leftwich. Yeah, that's just that's how it goes, you know. We're already past that part of it. 
But man, we are in for we're in for a, a shocker <laughs> if the Steelers were to have an offensive output. Just process this on Sunday night that yeah. looked that looks anything at all like what they did in the preseason. Yeah. Picture that. No one's bringing this up. You know, if they just go out there and they are now without Deontay, it's a different, okay. But it's possible. And if it happens, oh, wow. You are going to see this entire community just go. Yeah. What do we do now? Yeah. Me and you will be doing the same thing. We will. And yes, you can, Mike B. You had a 27 point average in the preseason. You've seen it before. I know it's not regular season. Oh. Yeah, this is the now all of a sudden, oh, Canada's going to have everybody ready. No, he's not. I, I like these comments right here. <laughs> okay. Chris giving you your props, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. All um, right, good people. Like said, we, will have, we will let everyone know when the show is on Monday. I have to align it with a, a long travel day yeah. coming back. Yeah, so it'll be either before or after. I get on the pl- you know get on or get off the plane and it's a as I mentioned earlier it's a four hour and change flight so we'll figure yeah. that out no doubt we will all right guys all right we Moan. shall reconvene DK y'all be good man right. uh, don't take any wooden nickels you know how we ended on Fridays hey call somebody hug somebody have a random conversation buy your friend next to you that you don't even know a random brew or something like that uh, make it back to us on Monday let's roll there you go.